Hey there and welcome back to a new week of What's For Dinner. I couldn't be more excited to be sharing this What's For Dinner with you today because this What's For Dinner is based off of the sheet pan. So I'm going to be showing you a bunch of different dinners that you could just make on one sheet pan, stick it in your oven, and then dinner is ready. I thought that was that would be nice to show you because Christmas is coming up and I'm sure a lot of people are busy and looking for some quick and easy dinner ideas. So I hope you enjoy it and let's get to cooking. To kick us off, we're going to start with some turkey meatloaf. So to begin in this bowl, I have about a pound of some fresh green beans. I'm just drizzling them with a tablespoon of olive oil and sprinkling plenty of salt and pepper on top. And then you're going to give this mixture a great mixing just to incorporate the olive oil all over the green beans. And then you're gonna move over to your sheet pan. And then I did line my sheet pan with some aluminum foil for easy cleanup. I just poured our green beans on top there and then I set them aside. We're gonna to begin to work on the turkey meatloaf now. In this bowl, I added our pound of ground turkey. If you prefer to use ground beef for your meatloaf, you could use ground beef. As a substitute, then I added a third a cup of panko breadcrumbs along with a half of a diced up onion, one egg, and your ketchup. I added about two tablespoons of ketchup and about a fourth a teaspoon of some thyme. I love adding thyme just because it adds great flavor. Then you're gonna add a little bit of some salt and pepper to taste. For our very last ingredient, I'm adding two teaspoons of some Worcestershire sauce. If you prefer coconut aminos, you could add two teaspoons of coconut aminos as a substitute. And now I'm just going to mix this all together. I ended up mixing it up with my hands just because it was that much easier. So now over to my sheet pan, I did grease it with plenty of some nonstick spray. I'm just going to make four miniature meatloafs. Everybody loves that sweet, wonderful glaze on top of meatloaf. So now that's what we're making into this bowl. I'm adding a half a cup of ketchup along with a teaspoon and a half of some Worcestershire sauce, tablespoon of some brown sugar, and you're just going to mix this all together. Pretty simple. To the tops of our meatloaf, we're going to generously pour our glaze right on this and then you're going to brush it out as even as possible. This is gonna go into a preheated oven to 425 degrees for about 30 minutes or until your meatloaf is thoroughly cooked through. Here is my meatloaf and green beans all cooked through. I love making this recipe because cleanup is such a breeze and this has so much flavor. Now we're going to be making one of my all-time favorites, bruschetta chicken and potatoes. We're gonna begin on the potatoes first. I'm just dicing up one pound of golden potatoes into smaller pieces. To my potatoes that are now diced, I just added a tablespoon of some olive oil along with some salt and pepper. I kept the seasonings pretty simple on the potatoes because the chicken has so much flavor. I just mixed this to coat the potatoes. Over to my sheet pan lined with parchment paper. I just dumped our potatoes out and then I spread them out as even as possible. And now we're going to work on our chicken. I just used one chicken breast because that is all my family needed. So I used one and sliced it horizontally so it looked like two. You probably already know this is my favorite way of cutting chicken. It just adds some great flavor to the chicken. Anyways, I just drizzled it with some olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and some Italian seasoning, and I just coated the chicken in that. I plopped our chicken right on our sheet pan and then I placed this into a preheated oven to 400 degrees for about 20 minutes or until our chicken was cooked through. And just like that, now our chicken is completely cooked. I'm just going to slice some slices of mozzarella cheese and put it on top. And then I'm gonna put this under the broiler for about two minutes or so to melt the cheese down. For our bruschetta topping, I'm just dicing up about 
two leaves of basil along with one Roma tomato. I actually ended up using around two Roma tomatoes in the end. Just use more or less depending on your taste preference. And then I added in three cloves of garlic. For the remainder of the ingredients in our bruschetta topping, I'm adding in a teaspoon and a half of some balsamic vinegar along with a teaspoon of some olive oil, salt, and pepper to taste, and that is it. You're just going to stir this all together and it's ready to go on the chicken. Here is the finished product. I just put that bruschetta topping right on top. We like it cold, but some people like theirs warm, so you could stick this back into the oven after you add the bruschetta topping to have the tomatoes warm up. But this turned out so good. This is such a yummy, flavorful meal. Now we're making a Hawaiian sheet pan dish. This one is so, so good. So to get it started, we're gonna dice up one green bell pepper along with a half of a purple onion into smaller pieces. Now we're going to make the yummy glaze that goes on top of this dish. So I have a 20 ounce can of crushed pineapple right here. You're supposed to get diced pineapple. That's what you're supposed to buy from the store, but I accidentally bought the crushed pineapple. Anyways, you're gonna wanna reserve all of the excess juice in it. So I just put it into a measuring cup like this. Now to my diced up chicken, I added in our veggies. This is just about a pound of chicken that I diced into smaller pieces. You're also going to want to add 10 ounces of diced up pineapple. Like I said previously, I accidentally got the crushed pineapple, so that's what I added. I also added a tablespoon of some olive oil with some garlic salt and some lemon pepper for the seasonings. To my cooking tray lined with some parchment paper, I added our mixture right in there. And then this went into a preheated oven to 420 degrees for about 20 minutes or until our chicken reached the internal temperature of 165 degrees. Now we're going to make the sauce, the yummy glaze that goes on top of the chicken. So to this pot, I added our pineapple juice that we reserved along with our fourth a cup of water, fourth a cup of some apple cider vinegar, two teaspoons of some soy sauce, about a teaspoon of some chicken bouillon. I used better than bouillon. Anyways, you're also gonna to wanna to add in a tablespoon of some sugar, a tablespoon of cornstarch, a tablespoon of some brown sugar, and a little bit of some garlic powder and lemon pepper to taste. I whisked this together very frequently until it became thick. I also brought it up to a boil and that's what helped thicken it up. Anyways, once it did get thick, I removed it from the heat. And then our chicken, now that it is cooked, I just poured the sauce all over the chicken. I stirred this all together to get the veggies and the chicken coated in the sauce. And then I stuck this under the broiler in my oven for about two minutes. Here is my plate of food. I just served this on a bed of some white rice. This turned out amazing. It had some great flavor. Again, this one is just so simple to make. Now we're making a super fun one. This is a pork roast tenderloin. So of course, we're gonna start with the veggies first. I have a pound of some tri-colored potatoes right here. I'm just dicing them in half. To ensure this has plenty of flavor, we're going to begin on a sauce that goes on top. So to this bowl, I'm adding a half a cup of some olive oil with six tablespoons of some balsamic vinegar. Of course, that sounds like a lot. If you're not a big balsamic vinegar fan, just add about two tablespoons, but this is going to add some great flavor. You're also going to add about two tablespoons of honey and about five to six cloves of minced garlic. You'll also want to add about a tablespoon of fresh rosemary. If you don't have fresh rosemary on hand, just add a teaspoon of the dried stuff and then some salt and pepper to taste. Mm -hmm. 
I whisked this mixture all together and then I removed about a third a cup of this for the veggies and I just set that aside. So for our pork tenderloin, this is a two pound pork tenderloin I got from my store. And then I just removed it from the case and then I just damped it with my paper towels to make it a little bit more dry. I set my pork tenderloin on our cooking tray with some parchment paper that is lined. I poured that yummy sauce all over it and then I kind of flipped it over to make sure the sauce is on all of the crevices. For our veggies now, I just have our potatoes that we chopped up and then I have about half a pound of some carrots and then I poured our sauce that we reserved right on top and then I just mixed this all together to co coat the veggies. I plopped our veggies right on the same sheet pan with our pork tenderloin. I do want to mention I did line our pan with some aluminum foil first and then placed parchment paper on top just to have some extra easy cleanup. I put this in the oven to roast on 350 degrees for about 45 to 50 minutes. Here is my pork out of the oven. It reached the internal temperature of 145 degrees. This came out so good. It had some wonderful flavor. My only complaint was the potatoes and carrots were not soft enough to where my family likes them to be. They were definitely soft, but we like them on the more soft side, I guess I should say. So next time I just cut the potatoes and carrots into smaller pieces. This one is definitely a family favorite that we're making. We're making some cod sweet potatoes and broccoli. So I just began with the veggies first. I chopped up two sweet potatoes into smaller pieces. I peeled them and then I chopped up one head of broccoli. I put it into this bowl and now I'm going to be adding about a tablespoon and a half of some of this zesty Italian dressing. It just comes in the packet form and we make the dressing at home. I get it from Walmart. And then I added about a half a teaspoon of some garlic salt on top with a small amount of some of this Mr. Dash lemon pepper and then I just mixed this to combine. Over to my parchment paper lined cooking tray, I added our veggies right in there. I mixed them together with my hands just to ensure that everything was pretty well distributed, all the flavors were on there nicely. And then I added our four cod fillets right on top. And then I just drizzled some more of that Italian dressing on top. It's just going to give it some great flavor. And then I added a little bit more lemon pepper and garlic salt to each side of these fillets. I placed this into a preheated oven to 425 degrees and this baked for about 20 to 25 minutes or until it reached the internal temperature of 145 degrees. And just like that, this is our finished product. This came out wonderful. We love this recipe because it really is simple to throw together if you're busy and you want to make something healthy. I just served our fish with some tartar sauce. This had amazing flavor. And that is a wrap of this video today. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. And of course, if you are new here, we would absolutely love to have you. So go ahead and subscribe down below the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.